In this video, we're going to be building a budget gaming PC. Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to AnyTech. This video is part one of a two part series on how to build a gaming PC. Now this is a budget gaming PC, which is going to cost you around about 550 pounds. In part one of this series, we're going to be doing all of the hardware. We're going to be putting all of the things in the places where they need to be. And then in part two, we're going to do all the software, things like adding windows to the PC, adding all of the drivers and things that we need to add, and as well as adding a couple of games. So are you ready to get this built? Let's get at it. Now building a gaming PC isn't as scary and as difficult as you might think. Most of the parts click together like Lego, so you can't really get it wrong. The hardest part about building a gaming PC is knowing which parts go with what. So for example, this motherboard is for AMD chips or AMD processors. This is an AMD processor here. But this motherboard won't work with Intel processors. Now, it's not too difficult to find out what goes with what. Like this one, for example, says Ryzen on the box, and this is a Ryzen chip, so sweet. Also as well, it says what socket it has on it. So this one has an AM4 socket. So if you just have a look at the processor and make sure that it is AM4, then these two will just click together, job done. And the way that they go together is super easy. I'll show you. So let's start with the motherboard. So crack your motherboard box open and inside you will find the motherboard itself. We've got a little bit of felt there and we've got all of the different parts that we need, all the little cables and wires and also the IO shield. Basically this sits on the back of your PC. I'll show that, you a little, show that to you a little later on. We've got a CD with drivers on. I don't know anybody uses that CDs anymore. And we also have a manual. Now, if you are new to building PCs and you're not too sure, you know, especially if you're a man, don't be, don't be afraid to read the manual. You won't lose man points. Trust me, you'll be all right. Especially if you do it in a room on your own. You know what I mean? Be sneaky. So once you've got all of the bits that you need out of the box, just close the motherboard box up. If you're building this P your PC on a dining room table like I am, the motherboard box is actually a good little workbench because you can take the motherboard out of its little pack here, slide it out and place it onto the motherboard box. So now you've got a little work area to play with. Move these bits out of the way. So now you've got the motherboard out. The next step is to add your processor to the motherboard. Now you're gonna be getting it out of the box. Now, because I live in the UK, knives are very much frowned upon, so I don't have some posh fancy knife like you see on the American videos. I just got a plain old kitchen knife. Pop that open, get your box open. Inside here, you will find two things. You will find your processor chip, and you will also find, with, this is an awesome thing about the AMD Ryzen chips, is you will also find a cooler in the box. So this means you don't have to shell out for an extra cooler. So that keeps the budget down of this build because it already comes for one. It already has thermal paste on the bottom of this cooler as well. So you don't have to worry about adding thermal paste. Literally put your processor on the board, slap this down, job done. Installing the processor is super simple. All you need to do is, first of all, just on the board here, you can see there's a little metal lever. Lift that lever up, and then you're gonna get your chip out of the box, get your processor. You're gonna lift it out of the box. Be very, very careful with it because on the processor, there is loads of little pins. You can see them there. You don't wanna bend any of those Make sure that you're very careful, don't touch the pins. On the other side of the processor, you might see there is a little gold mark on the other side of the processor, just there. This is going to give you the ability to know which way to orientate the processor on the board. So you've got a little gold mark there. I don't know how well you can see, but on the board itself, we have a little gold, we have a little triangle here as well. So that little gold triangle 
will match up with this triangle on the corner of the board. And all you've got to do is match them together, put the little gold triangle basically on this side, and then you will know that you've put the processor in the right spot. So have a look all around the socket and see if you can find a matching triangle to the one on the processor and then put those two together. And then it's just a simple case of matching them up, then just line it up, drop it on, that's it, just drop it on, pull the lever down, it clicks underneath a little holder just there, your processor's fitted. That's how easy it is, super, super simple. Next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we're going to want to install our cooler. So this is what came in the box. You can buy these separately, you know, you can buy bigger, badder coolers if you want to, but this will do the job of what we need to do. Now, another great thing about building a PC is the lack of tools. All you really need is a Phillips head screwdriver and you're good to go. Now, this motherboard has some mounts here that we don't actually need. So we're going to use our Phillips head screwdriver and we're gonna take them off. Now once you've removed the screws, you can remove these little black things here. We don't need these for this build, so we'll get rid of those. But what you wanna do is make sure that you keep the motherboard flat because there's a little plate on the underside of the motherboard that these screw things are attached to here. And we need those for our cooler. So we're going to place our cooler on the board. So we're gonna line the screws up that are on the cooler, get it all lined up, place it on, all good, pop it down. I've got the little AMD sign here online with the Marta Max sign as well. Ideally I'd want it the other way around but it won't fit that way. And then we're just going to use our Phillips head screwdriver and we're gonna put the screws into this. We're gonna do it corner by corner. So I'm gonna do one side, do one corner, and then I'm gonna do the opposite corner so that we don't put too much strain on the board. Now you wanna make sure that you tighten it up, but you don't want to over tighten it. So just as soon as it gives you a bit of resistance, as soon as it starts to feel like it's stopped, just stop. And there we go, that is our cooler fitted. Now if you notice, there's a little wire here. This wire needs to be put into one of our CPU fan sections. So I don't know how well you can see, on the top of our board, there's a section here that says CPU fan one. So we're going to be plugging this cable into this little plug here. So we're gonna get the cable, Again, like I said to you early on, everything sort of like fits in a certain way. This has been grooved out, so I don't know how well you can see there. You can see these two little notches there. That makes it so that the plug can only go in one way because on the actual thing here, there's a little clip just here. So if you line those little grooves with the clip, there you go, it's in. So that is the plug in and we're good. Now, if you want to tidy up a little bit, you can like, you know, tuck the wire away. If you don't want the wire hanging around, you know, just give it a little bit of a tuck away like that. So it looks a little bit neater when you start building your PC into the case. Right, so that is our processor fitted and we've got our cooler on. That's going to keep the processor nice and cool when it's working hard, playing our computer games. Next thing that we're gonna do is fit the RAM. For RAM, we are gonna be using the Corsair Vengeance LPS RAM. This is 3,200 megahertz, so it's nice and fast, and it's two sticks of eight gigabytes, which is a total of 16 gigabytes, so we're gonna have plenty of memory. So if we pop these out, installing them, again, is super simple. Like I said, all the way through this is you can't really put things into the wrong place. So these sections here is where we're going to install our RAM. Now, what we need to check is we need to check our manual to see which slots are the correct slots 
for two sticks of RAM. So like I said, don't worry if you think you're gonna lose man points um, using the manual. It's always best to use a manual just in case. So you can see here, there's a little diagram of where we're going to put the RAM. If we were only using one stick of RAM, we would be putting it in the second slot just up here. If we're going to be using two sticks of RAM, then we're actually going to be putting it in the second and the fourth slot. Now, if you wasn't to know about that, and you was just gonna put them in, you would probably just put them straight in the one and the two slots, wouldn't you? But no, what you're supposed to do if you've got two sticks of RAM is put them in slot number two and slot number four on this motherboard. So that means we're going to pop these catches here. So you can see there's some catches here, these ones as well on this side. Pop all of those catches open, and then we're going to take our RAM. Now on the RAM, you can see there's a little notch cut out just there. That means that, again, you can't put this in the wrong position. That makes it so that you can't put this in the wrong way round. So if we was to say, for example, put our RAM stick in this way into slot number two, it won't go in because there is a notch on the motherboard. So I don't know how well you can see, but there's actually a notch on the motherboard just here. So the notch on the RAM stick has to line up with that. So like I said, if we was to put it in that way around, it won't go. So we have to spin it around, again, putting it in slot two, because that's what the manual said, and then just push and click. And then these two catches here will close, locking the RAM in place. Then we're gonna take our st second stick and we're gonna put it in slot four, as it states in the manual. Pop that in, push down, Job done, we're installed, that's our RAM fitted. All right, so now that we've got our board prepped, we can add it to the case. Now this is awesome because it means that we're getting very, very close to being able to play some games. Now this is a tempered glass case. So what that means is it's got a glass side. So that means you can see the inner workings of the PC if you have it on your desk like I do. You can throw RGB strips in there to brighten it all up on the inside and have it all looking funky if you want. I just tend to stick with a, uh, with blue. So my desk is giving off blue light, my computer gives off blue light, my monitor does, so does my keyboard and mouse. I like having everything uniform. So what we do is release the thumb screws. So just as I said earlier on, we're gonna do it corner to corner. So release the screws, do the top one, bottom one, and then the top one up here. Now we've got it on its back, we can have a look inside and see these things here. These are called standoffs. Basically the raised sections inside the case, little screw um, mounts which are raised up from the case. This is where we're going to mount our motherboard to. Now there's one here, one here, one here, one here, one there, one there, one there, and one there. Now they're scattered around um, in a certain orientation perfect for our micro ATX motherboard. Now you can also get ATX motherboards, but this case won't fit one because they're a bit bigger than the one that we're using. All you simply do is just put your board into the case, lining it up with your IO shield that you installed before. Like that. And then some of the things here have little raised areas and then it should just slot in like that. That is now in place nicely. We're lined up with the IO shield at the back. Perfect, job done. So once you've got your motherboard in place, you'll see, like I said, there's loads of little different holes and them holes are for screws. So if you take your trusty Phillips screwdriver and just simply screw the screws that came with the computer into each one, just a nice little hand tight and don't over tighten it, that is your motherboard in place. All right, so now it's time to install the graphics card. And this is gonna do exactly what it says on the tin, provide us with graphics. Now there's all sorts of different types of graphics cards that you can get out there. And the more money you spend on one of these things, the better the graphics will be. 
You can have like a cheaper one, which will do like 60 frames per second at 1080p. But if like, say for example, you've got a monitor like mine behind me there, which is a 1440p monitor, you need a little bit of a better graphics card to be able to power that thing. If you wanna play games in 4K, then you need a better graphics card again. So this is what we're gonna be installing on this build. Now, before you get it out of its wrapper that's in there, we need to prep the case for its installation. So we'll stand the case up and you can see on the back here where we installed the IO shield just here, there's some slots here as well. We're gonna to want to remove one of these slots. So the graphics card is going to fit into this silver slot here. So because it's gonna fit in this silver slot, we're probably gonna to want to remove this top slot on the back. So this slot right here. So we're gonna pop that one out and put the graphics card there. So to pop it out, it's just a simple case of, you know, put a little bit of pressure on it, get behind it, give it a bit of a wiggle out. Some cases are different. This, there you go. This is a pretty cheap case, so it's quite flim flimsy, I find. But we've got a little slot there. So what we'll do now is take our graphics card pop it out of the wrapper and then on the bottom here you can see there's a little protective sleeve we're going to slide this off revealing that and then on here like I said on the silver section here on the case it was just like the RAM that we installed earlier on there is a little notch in this graphics card here just there so that means that the graphics card will only fit one way. So we're gonna be installing the graphics card into this section here. And like I said, there's a little notch just here near my finger, which will match up with the little notch here on the graphics card. So all we do is line it up Place it on Push it down and click and that is our graphics card installed. All we're gonna to need to do now is just put a couple of screws into here and we're all good. So take your trusty Phillips screwdriver again, get your graphics card lined up and then screw it nice and tightly in place so it's going nowhere. And then if you have a look on the back, you will see now We'll get lined up you can see this is the back end of the graphics card we can see we've got a hdmi port there and we also have a display port just there as well as a little dvi connection all right so that's the major parts in place ready to go all we really need to do now is get everything wired up and get the power in there and we're nearly done flick the case around to the other side and then you'll see a back panel if you just turn the thumb screws that are on the back of that panel you'll find a, probably a little handle or something pull it and then remove the back and then in the back you can see some cables here and stuff like that this is what we're going to be using to wire everything up so if you just drag them out here there's loads of different ends loads of different connections loads of different things so we need to get all of these attached to either our power or our motherboard. Now before we do all that, let's get our power installed. Get the trusty kitchen knife out, and then let's crack open the box. Inside the box, we have important information. <laughs> we have a kettle lead, which is going to obviously resemble the country that you're from. And then we have got some screws to install the power pack and then we have the power pack itself so this is a 650 watt power pack probably a little bit overkill for this system but we've got a little bit of headroom if we need it so you can see on the bottom here we have a fan and then we've got loads of wires here which are for different parts of the PC now this is a non-modular power supply. So basically all of the wires are already pre-connected. 
So you can actually buy um, power supplies like this, which have a load of plug sockets in the back where you can connect these wires to them. And then you can use the wires that you need and not use the wires you don't need. Whereas these ones, all of the wires are there, so you've got to find a place to tuck them and hide them in your case. This type of power pack is a little bit cheaper than the modular ones, so you know if you need to save a little bit of money, it's not too hard to hide these wires away. When you're installing, make sure that you install with the fan facing downwards. In most of the cases nowadays, they have little um, sections here, little dust guards, and this is where your power pack will draw the air from the bottom of your case through this area into the fan, and then it will exhaust it out through the back there. So all you gotta do with a power supply is just take the cable tie off it to unravel its lovely locks. Ooh, look at all that. Unravel all of these wires, let them free, set them loose. And then what you're gonna do is take your power pack. You obviously, this is the back side of the power pack. You can see the power buttons there. Oh, sorry, the power buttons on that side and the space for the kettle lead is there as well. So we're gonna slide that into the case. Let me show you. Line it up with the back of the case. It's hard to do this when you're on, trying to get the angles for the camera. Slide it into the back of the case. Get it all lined up. Once you've got it lined up, you're gonna take the screws that came with the case, these ones, and your trusty screwdriver and just line the screw holes up with the holes in the case and just screw it in. And there you go, power pack is now in place. You've got your switch there to turn the PC on and off. You also have your kettle lead and the place to put it just there. On this side now, you can see we have got a massive, massive jumble of wires. Now where are all these wires going to go? So the first one we're going to be looking for is one that is absolutely massive. You've got this big bad boy here. This is going to plug into your motherboard. So you can see we've got loads of little spaces all around the motherboard. So we're going to pass this big massive plug here. We're going to pass it through. And then if I come around this thing, you can sort of like see, again, you can't plug it in the wrong way. It's got a little clip on the top here and the way it is. So we just look for where that clip would go, line it up like that. And there we go. That is now plugged in. So that is going to power our motherboard. So the next cable you're going to want to install is your CPU power. Now this we're going to park through the top just here because the CPU power plug is here on this motherboard. So we're going to come through the top and we're going to plug it in. Same old story as all of the other plugs. You can't plug it in the wrong way. All you do is just line it up with the clip. So there's a clip on the plug and there you go. So you just pop that in up at the top there. Again, keep all your cables nice and tidy. And that is the CPU powered up. And then we've got our case cable. So all of these cables that were already pre-installed to the case. So a lot of these we're not really too bothered about because they're for LEDs, but these ones we are. So we've got the HD audio one, we've got the USB 3.0, and then we've got these ones here which are gonna control different parts of the case. So we're gonna get those installed into where it says to install them on the motherboard. So in the bottom of the case just here, there's some little slits. There's a slit there. I'll show you, poke my fingers through. There's a slit here, and then there's another slit just over here. So we're gonna pass those case cables through these slits. Now the first one is gonna be the USB 3.0, which is this one here. Just that one there. You can sort of like tell because it matches up quite well. So if we pop the USB 3.0 cable through that little slit and then we're going to pop it into that plug there. Same as before, you can't really get it wrong because it has a little notch on the plug 
just at the top there and then on the actual socket there's a little cutout for that notch so we just put that round and in it goes pull the cables round and there we go that cable is now installed now the next cables that we're going to install are a tad bit more difficult to install than everything else and that is these cables each one has something written on them so you've got power led you've got power switch you've got reset switch you've, they've all got different names on them written on them so there isn't anything it's supposed to go into this plug here down here but as you can see where do you put them because they all go to there so this is where you do have to consult the manual on this one so if you go to the manual and if you have a quick flick through you will find the correct place to put them so it says here in the book so if you have a look here you can see a description here in the book of where they go so it tells you there you know power led where they go the plus and minus the power switch etc you can see where they all fit and as you can see on the plug just here there is one pin missing just in that top corner there and then you have a look at the manual you can see there's one pin missing on that diagram as well so just copy the diagram there um, with the cables and you're away now these cables are very fiddly indeed so what i would suggest is start with the bottom row first so you see there where it says jfp1 so the bottom row of pins start with them first so as i look at it as you look at it on the bottom left we need hdd led which one's that one that is this plug here that one will go there next to that one we've got reset switch which is that one there we go and then the pin next to that is reserved so we don't need to worry about that pin so above it we've got the power led so the first one is the plus and then to the side of that one we have the power switch which is that one and that one will go straight into there so that's all of those plugged in and as you can see that was quite fiddly so definitely consult the manual when you're going to do that one and then finally we've got the hd audio cable so it's got written on it hd audio don't know why you can see there see hd audio and again you can't really fit it wrong because one of the sections of the plug is blanked off and if you have a look at the hd audio pin here which is the jr1 you can see there's a pin missing there so if we line that missing pin up swing that around and there we go, sorted. That is the HD audio cable in. So this case comes with two fans pre-installed on the case, and it also has a three-way splitter. So we've plugged the two fans into the splitter so that we've just got one output just here. And this output will fit into this system fan socket just here. Now, if you have a look, I don't know how you can see it, there's only three pins on this plug. But on the actual thing there's four but same again you can't really get it wrong because there's a little clip just here and as you can see on the plug you can see there's some little grooves on the plug there to line up with the clip so if we just slide them in there and there we go that is our system fans fitted now if you have a bigger graphics card than the one that's being fitted into this you would also need to add these cables to it so normally on the side of the graphics cards there's a little plug where you would plug these cables in but this graphics card doesn't need it so we can tuck those cables away right so we're almost done now almost everything is installed we have got our cpu installed with the cooler we've got our ram we've got our graphics card the power supply is installed and we also have some case fans in the front just here which are going to keep everything nice and cool as well as this cooler here we've just got one more thing to add and that is a hard drive now this is where windows is going to be installed this is where your games are going to live now ideally you could have two of these one for windows and one for your games so if you get yourself a nice big one so that you can store all your games on it 
that would be more ideal. But obviously if you're on a budget and you can only afford one hard drive at the beginning, then that'll be fine. Uh, when you sort of like get a bit more money in your pocket, you can splash out and get a new one. So this is pretty cool because this is a solid state drive. This is an SSD. So these are tiny, very, very small. That's it. That is the hard drive. Tiny, tiny, tiny little thing. Now in the box with the motherboard came a couple of cables. So we've got these cables here and these cables have a little cutout in them. So they're like L-shaped cables. I can't get the camera to focus on it to show you. But the little L shapes and on the um, hard drive here, there's also little L shapes and they just click together nice and easy. So if you just go like that, in they go, simple. And then on the other end, there's a section of the motherboard where this one clips in and I'll show you that in a sec. So the way you fit um, hard drives to a case is different from case to case, I find. Like this case is completely different than what I've... Um, experience before this one has sort of like little standoffs you can see them here little standoffs that sit up off the hard drive so you just get them screw them in and then you've got some little rubber grommets inside here so you take these little rubber grommets by the looks of things and you place them in these holes then when you've put the little rubber grommets in these little standoffs will just push straight into the grommets so I'm going to pass through the power cable from the power supply. So there's a little power cable just here, like so. And I'm gonna connect that to this hard drive before I install it. So same again, it's just a little L-shaped connector and it just pushes straight into the hard drive. And then all we do is line these little metal standoffs up with the rubber grommets that we installed and there's our hard drive fitted. Now we have one more thing to do. One of the tiny little plugs that we've just got, this one here, this one needs to connect to one of these sections here. So if we get the light on it, there's a section here. Again, if you can see, it's L-shaped again. So all we do is just line it up L shape to L shape, can't get it wrong, plug it in, tidy your cable away and your hard drive is now installed. Tidy the cables up at the back as best you can, make sure it's just all nice and, nice and neat and tidy so that you can get the back of the case back on. And there you go, lovely, neat and tidy, nice and tidy on the inside no wires strewn around everywhere nice and clean we've got our two fans in the front we've got our cooler fan there lovely nice and tidy that pc is now ready to go everything is installed that we need to be installed all we need to do now is connect it to power to make sure that everything is running as it should all right so moment of truth time will this pc power up yes Yes, it will. So we've got our fans on. We've got some LED lights on the inside in there as well. Monitor's just popped up. Let's see if we get anything on the monitor, if we get any BIOS popping up on the monitor. There we go. So guys, that is how you build a gaming PC. Step by step, easy to follow you'll be all right. Now don't forget to stick around for part two of this series where we go through what all of this means and we start to add windows to the computer, all of the drivers that we need, as well as obviously some games. At the end of part two, we're gonna test out games like Fortnite and Warzone to see what frame rates we're getting. This is a brand spanking new channel and if you've enjoyed this video, please show your support by hitting that subscribe button. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure that you hit the like button as well. And if you've got any comments, make sure that you leave them in the comment section. Thank you to everybody that has watched this video. You're all awesome. See you all in the next one.